Hey everybody, welcome to day one of 12 Days of Cricut Christmas Crafts with Debbie O'Neill. Today's project is a countdown to Christmas chalkboard project using vinyl and images in Design Space. So let's take a look at where do you get the image from in Design Space and then you're going to see me actually um, put this project together and we're going to be talking about layering our different colors of vinyl today. So let me just, I'm going to just turn these off so they're out of our way. And now we're going to come over here into images. And I'm going to go to cartridges and I'm going to search countdown to Christmas. This is a new image set that's in design space. And it has so many cute things in it. Now, once you type in Countdown to Christmas, you're going to need to scroll down a little bit because anything with the word Christmas is going to come up because that's how the search works in Design Space. And here we find Countdown to Christmas, and it has 114 different images in it. And here we go. Okay, so there's lots of choices here. So there's separate words, there's separate images, but they also have all these graphics already put together. So there's so many cute ones. It was hard for me to decide which one I wanted, um, but they also have individual numbers if you're doing any other type of countdown. So this is the lighted one, that's the lights. There's uh, an ornament, there's a snow globe. There are so many cute ones. This little snowman one was really adorable. Gingerbread man, there's even like a gift box one. So these are really fun. You can also, there's different pieces of those same images. So if you wanted to use them on a different project for something else, you can do that too. So this is a really cool uh, image set that I wanted to show you guys and to work with. I love the little elf too. I thought he was super cute. So we're going to work with the uh, lights and I'm just going to click on that and insert images. And it's going to come into design space. And of course, it's going to be smaller than what I want for my project. But the first thing I want to do is I am using a um, chalkboard that is from the, ta the Target dollar spot. And it was only $3. And I'll show you that when we start looking at the project pieces. But um, this, I, it, no matter what chalkboard you're using, you can use the same thing. But what I'm going to do is go in. I want to create a background for myself so I know about the dimensions of that chalkboard piece. I know it's nine inches wide and I know it's 11 and a half inches tall. So I'm going to make myself my own little template, if you will. This I'm not going to cut out. It will be on the design space file that I give you guys. This is just to size it, okay? So you would then size it to the, to the dimensions of whatever chalkboard it is that you're using, all right? So down here in the left-hand corner is a way for you to zoom out and zoom in on your project. When you're working with something that's bigger than your screen like that, you can hit, click it once and it'll go down to 75%. You can even go down further than that. Okay, so, and then you just uh, right click it on the plus and it brings it back up. I'm going to keep it at 75% because that's an easy way for you guys to see that. And now I'm going to take my image that I imported over, brought into Design Space Matte, and I want to put this on top of this because I want to size it. So I'm just going to right click and now we have features in Design Space where you're going to be able to move your different layered images to the front or back or whatever. So I'm going to bring this to the front. It says send to the front and now this piece is on top of my uh, background template. Okay, And then all I need to do is grab that little grab bar here and slide this. Let me set this up here where I want it. Okay, So I'm going to take this, I'm going to slide this over until I get it so it's fitting on here about in the way that I want it to be on there. That's pretty simple, right? Now, I want to see what colors of material do I want to use on this. And these colors that the image came in are a little bit too dark for putting on a black chalkboard. So, and plus I want to use some of my own branding colors for Scrap Me Quick Designs because I'm going to use this in my craft studio. So I want to go in and I'm going to change some of the coloring. And let's say, all right, so the gold's probably okay. The purple's too dark. I'm going to make it a lighter purple. This doesn't change anything other than it gives you a better present 
a representation of what you want it to look like. And so you can change things around over here. I don't want to use red. I'm going to use pink because that's one of my branding colors. And that green is awfully dark on that. So I want to see what does that look like if I change that color to the lighter green. Okay, look at the difference that this made, okay? Just changing the colors around, it's the color palette seems more pleasing to me for my purposes. You can play with the layers panel over here and change your colors on your images. It, it doesn't matter what you cut it out of, this just gives you a visual representation. So I wanted to explain that. I had a lot of people asking me about that. And then I wanna make sure that this is pretty much where I'm gonna want it on my board, make sure it's gonna be the right size, and then I'm ready to cut it out. So let's go to the next part where I'm gonna show you all the materials that I use for this project, and then we're gonna actually put the project together. Okay, now that we've talked about the image that I'm gonna be using for the Countdown to Christmas chalkboard, I'm gonna show you all the materials and the tools that I'll need to be using. First thing, of course, is going to be that we have to have our chalkboard base project. This is from the target dollar spot in November, December of 2018. You can find these, they're on a stand, okay? So they're on a wooden stand and they are only $3. So what a steal. And you could actually use both sides of this. It does have a sticker that comes on it. I was able to use my Cricut um, spatula and scrape that sticker off and then I used some goo gone and kind of wiped it all up and let it dry and then I was good to go. And you can certainly use a different chalkboard. You would just size your project accordingly, okay? I am also going to be using some other tools and I will need to have some weeding tools because we're going to be working with vinyl. And so these two tools come from the quick, the Cricut weeding toolkit okay this one there's two of these hook tools in there this one is the one that has the extra little nib see how it kind of points down right here this has a little extra sharp piece on it that helps you pull your vinyl up easier and then i love to use these little cricut fine tip tweezers these are great when you're doing vinyl work to get into those small letter pieces okay so i'm going to have that of course i will need a scraper because i'm working with vinyl so i'm going to use my extra large cricut scraper because i'm i kind of have a larger project and this will help me do it quicker and then i'm also going to be using the cricut true control knife it has a stop on it here where if i roll it it's going to stop automatically it is not going to keep rolling off of my table which i love and it has a nice big cap on it to protect the blade and yourself from the blade when it's not in use and it also has ch easily changeable blades that you don't even have to touch when you change them out i will also be using the cricut their metal uh, safety ruler so we're going to you're going to see me using that and we're also going to be using some cricut transfer tape and this is the regular cricut transfer tape I did want to talk about that briefly because I've had some questions. There, Cricut has two transfer tapes. One is the regular and it just says transfer tape on it, okay? The other one is the strong grip transfer tape. And that's for when you're working with glitter, the Cricut glitter vinyl. You don't use it on any other project, only when you're using it on the Cricut glitter vinyl, okay? And a piece of it comes inside the glitter vinyl rolls. We're not using glitter vinyl today. We're gonna to be using the Cricut Premium Vinyl Removable. And I love this because it comes in a variety pack. So you get 20 sheets of 12 by 12 and um, they've been on sale all through Black Friday and into December. So if you haven't bought any of this yet, you may wanna grab one of these packs because it gives you 20 beautiful colors for you to choose from for your project. So I'm gonna be working with several different colors. I'm using the removable. It also, the premium vinyl also comes in a permanent vinyl, which if I was gonna do something where I'm gonna, I want this sign to last me forever, and I am going to have it outside and it's going to be exposed to the elements and that type of thing, I would use permanent. But right now, I, I'm thinking I may, after a couple of years, I may want to take this off. Cricut's removable vinyl has an adhesive on it that when you remove it from your object, whether it's the wall or a 
chalkboard piece or whatever, it's not going to leave a sticky residue behind up to two years, okay? Um, so anyway, so but this is the rental that we're going to be using, and I'm going to be using a Cricut Light Grip mat because this mat is perfect for when you're working with vinyl and you're doing your cut. So I will cut all my vinyl out using this mat, and I also use it as an aid when I go to apply my transfer tape. So I'm going to show you guys that. And then, of course, underneath you're going to see that I have my Cricut um, self-adhesive mat. And... Um, that's all the tools that we're going to need, uh, besides, of course, your Cricut machine to cut this out. So let's get started. Okay, I had another tip to share with you is once you cut your vinyl, flip your mat over and remove the vinyl by slowly just pulling the mat back and keeping your hand on your vinyl sheet. And I just kind of move it over as I peel the mat off. And that'll keep your project flat and so that it doesn't get um, it doesn't get that curl to it okay so that's just a little tip okay now my next tip is going to be using the Cricut True Control knife to show you how I trim my vinyl so before I am going to start applying it or weeding it I want to trim away the excess so that I can use that on another project but what I hate to do is use my scissors and then it's all uneven and it doesn't, it's, you know, it's not always straight. And then when I go to put it on my Cricut mat, then it's not even. And anyway, it just makes it that much harder. So I like to go ahead and use my self-adhesive, uh, self-healing mat and the Cricut um, safety ruler, okay? And I'm going to figure out where on my project my image is on my vinyl and then I want to line use the grid and line up my edge of my ruler and then just run the edge of the true knife true blade knife true control knife down the side and then I end up with this nice clean crisp perfectly straight line so that if I want to go put this on my Cricut mat and cut another project out of it, it's already going to be, you know, lined up appropriately so that it's easier for me to use it. So I do that all the way around. So I'm just going to line it up, figure out where my, I can usually tell by my, with my, with my finger is, and I'm just going to line it up. I love using this mat because it makes it so much simpler to do this. And just put my true control knife right here and slide it right down. Okay, so now I have all of my pieces are kind of trimmed up for me. And the next thing we're going to do is the weeding. Okay, so now I'm going to weed the vinyl. I want to show you that process. I'm not going to make you watch me weed all of these, but I'm going to do the first one. What I like to do is use my light grip mat and then put my vinyl on my mat and just kind of lightly rub it on there. I don't want to scrub it really hard on there. And then I'm going to use my weeding tool and I'm going to pick up the edge of my vinyl. Now this is the Cricut Premium Vinyl and you're going to find that it now has a waxy backing on the vinyl. It's more of a plasticky feel to it. It's not paper, so you're not going to end up with that paper residue that sometimes you would have if you um, were using the older style of Cricut adhesive vinyl. And I'm just going to peel this right up. Look how easy that weeds. It is awesome. Okay. And then we're going to use the, I like to use my little tweezers to get up in here to peel up these little pieces that go in the centers of the letters. So I'm just going to do that real quick. And you want to make sure you get them all. Sorry easier if you go at it at a different angle sometimes. Okay, and I can just lift that right up. Makes it so much easier. Okay, these are those fine tips that come in the, the Cricut Weeding Tool Kit, and I love these for weeding. 
makes it so much easier for me to grasp it and to put it on. Okay, so I have the days uh, part of the um, image weeded in the circle. And now we're going to, the light <laughs> circle, and now we're going to uh, finish weed. I'm going to finish weeding, and then we'll come back and apply the project. Once I've weeded all my vinyl pieces, then I want to cut my transfer tape. So what I like to do is just cut one sheet of transfer tape that's going to be big enough for the biggest part of my project. When they're all fairly similar in size, I want it to be as tall as the highest piece and as wide as the widest piece. Okay, so I'm going to use my True Control Cricut knife and I'm going to use my ruler and cut down where I need to trim this piece and I'll just set that off to the side. And then I know that this piece needed to come right underneath this box. So I'm going to cut a line right here. I love using my self feeling mat because it has great grids on it. It's easy to see. Okay, so I'm just going to run that edge. Okay, so I've got extra pieces of my transfer tape that I'm not going to use right now, but this is perfectly good. I could use it for another project. So what I've done is I have a big um, Ziploc bag and I, I put strong grip transfer tape on one side of it. Okay, and you can see that the strong grip transfer tape actually says strong grip transfer tape on it. Okay, and then on the other side, I have a piece of chipboard in the center of this bag. And on the other side, I just have my regular transfer tape. Okay, that's what that just says transfer tape. And then so this Cricut transfer tape, just the regular transfer tape doesn't have any extra words on it and it is kind of a gray color as opposed to the Cricut Strong Grip tape is more purple, okay? So that's how you can tell the difference, but this is how I store my scraps of my transfer tape when I'm trimming it away for to fit my different vinyl projects and also when I save it, and I'll show you guys that here in a minute, when I save it, I go back and put it in this bag, and then that way if I need to reuse it, I've got my pieces all here, and I know which is my regular transfer tape and which is my strong grip tape. So that's just a little quick tip from me to you. All right, so we're going to work on our project. The first thing we want to do is you need to figure out which um, of your images goes first. We're going to start with our day's image, okay, and then we're going to do our, and the uh, gold image, okay. So, I've got my transfer tape now. So, what you can do is you can use your Cricut mat again if you want, and you can lay that on your mat, and then put your, um, your weeded piece down, and then use your transfer tape on top of that if you're having trouble with it sliding around. Uh, with the new Cricut transfer tape, it's not as thick as the old Cricut transfer tape was, and it works beautifully. So what I want to do is I'm just going to take my piece, and I'm going to fold it kind of in half towards itself, and then I can lay it in the center of this, and then just do one side down and then the other side, okay? And then that's going to allow me to go ahead and get that onto my image and then I'm going to take my scraper tool and I'm only going to scrape the part where I have the vinyl. I don't want to scrape this onto my mat. I only want to do it where I'm transferring the image and then I'm going to use this to peel this up. Get all that up off of there. Okay, and then I'm going to flip this over and pull this up. This mat is brand new. It is super, super duper sticky. Uh, if, it, if you had a mat that wasn't as sticky, it, it might even work a little bit better for you. Okay, so we've got this. I want to make sure that that vinyl is on my transfer tape. So I'm going to scrape it on there. I'm going to flip this over. Now I have the back of the removable vinyl is facing me. Now you'll notice that now Cricut, it does say removable vinyl. So you know which kind you're working with. If you, you're, you're using the new premium Cricut vinyl and look how easy, super duper easy. I'm just peeling it right off. I got some loopies down here <laughs> with my lettering. So I just want to kind of maneuver that around. 
a little bit and I don't need that part anymore. And I want to get my project back out there. So I have already cleaned off my, my chalkboard here so it is ready for me to use. I'm going to use my um, grid on my self healing mat to help me kind of line this up a little bit. And I know that when I look at my image, I know that from looking in Design Space, this needs to be about an inch over from the left side, and it needs to be about, I mean, a, yeah, half an inch over from the left side, and it needs to be about an inch down from the top of the chalkboard, okay? So using my mat, I know that that's an inch down right here, okay? And over here, I know that's about a half an inch. So I'm just going to line that up. Now, I am an eyeball person. I just kind of see what looks like it's going to work best for me. And I don't sweat it being absolutely perfect. And then I'm just going to lay it down. So you do want to have an idea, depending upon how big your chalkboard is. Now, this is the, the target one that I'm using. But you may be using a different one and you may have sized your project differently. So if you did that, now you can take your scraper tool and scrape this on there. When I'm working with chalkboard, I tend to like to just rub it with my finger, the vinyl with my fingers, because I don't want to take a chance I'm going to scrape any of that chalkboard. So then I'm just going to roll that right off. Look how pretty that looks. It's so cool. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the gold. Okay, you use whatever colors you're using, but we're going to use the one that says until on it. Okay, for this one, I'm not going to get the mat out again. I'm just going to lay this on there and I'm going to fold it in half and lay it kind of in the center of my project. I'll let one side go down since I'm working with the big piece. Okay. That's why I'm doing it that way. It makes it easier to transfer your vinyl. I'm just going to get it on there, and then I use my scraper tool to kind of lift it up off the mat for me because I'm working with a piece bigger than my image. Okay, then I'm just going to roll that back. <laughs> I can probably hear that cackling, crackling on here, right? just rolling it off okay now when I get down here to the letters I want to make sure that I rub the letters from the back and then kind of slowly roll these off because those letters are thin on this image and sometimes you need to give it a little extra help okay, I want these letters to stay down where they belong so sometimes you've got to roll it the opposite direction of the letter there we go so it's coming down so see how I'm just kind of rolling it so it reveals the letters there we go I just needed to get all those little fine letters off of here the big the big letters come off just fine those little ones you got to just be a little gentle with them okay so now I've got the piece that says until and we know that this piece needs to go right next to there. And I want to line up my bulbs that are gold. I'm just going to line those up. And I'm only going to rub down where those letters need to stick to my chalkboard. Okay, and I'm going to peel this back up. Okay. So you're just going to keep repeating this until you get everything in place. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the, um, the, the one that has the C and the S and the S on the bottom. There again, same piece of transfer tape. I'm just going to lay it down. Okay. I'm going to use my scraper tool and make sure I get these on there really well. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over. I'm gonna, I always try to roll it off at an angle because it helps release it easier and leaves your image on generally. Unless you have little fine letters and sometimes you have to just play with that. And that crackling that you're hearing is just the plasticky backing of this. 
Okay. It probably sounds louder on camera than it does on here. Okay, so I want to line this back up again. And line up my bulbs. Okay, and I'm only going to press down where I have the pink now. And then peel that right up. Okay, looking very cool. All right, let's go into the next layer. So we're going to go ahead and do the, the teal or whatever color it is that you're doing. Same thing. I'm just showing you how you how you layer all this on. Okay, so with all these multiple colors, that's something you guys ask me about all the time. It was one of the reasons why I wanted to do this project so that you could see how do you work with all these different colors. You just do them one at a time. But you do have to kind of look at your particular image that you're using. about right. Get my bulbs on there. Fill that right up. Now you'll notice we keep using the same transfer tape. You can always go back over and rub it with your finger again. Make sure it's down there. And now we're going to put the final color on, which is in my case, the purple. And it has the I and the A on the end. Lay that down, rub these on. You can use your scraper tool if you want. I'll look this up. Okay, you're going to see the big reveal here in a second of how all of these colors come together on that one project. Okay, so we're going to lay this down, and I'm going to put my A and my I where it needs to go here on my project. And lay down where my bulbs are. And then lift that right up. Now, how cute is that? Okay, and now that I have my adorable countdown to Christmas done, all I have to do is use a chalk marker. And I've already primed this one. And all I have to do is add my first day. And once that's dry, you're able to erase it with just a damp cloth. And now I have my countdown to Christmas ready to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this and some of the tips that I've shared with you along the way. Stay tuned for day two of Get Christmas Crafts with Debbie.